Hey guys, Greg here with Lens Pro to Go, and I have some things to know about the Teradek Bolt 500. The Bolt 500 is an improvement over Teradek's previous Bolt 500. Keeping the same name, but its clever design coupled with some useful features make it well worth the upgrade. Teradek has housed the guts in a compact milled aluminum box. The Bolt's casing will shed excess heat as easily as a dog shakes off water. So the Bolt doesn't need a fan to be water-cooled or anything else to complicate it. While this does mean the Bolt will get hot, in our test it never got hotter than 125 degrees Fahrenheit. The transmitter weighs about 220 grams, or just about half a pound. For comparison, it's about the weight of your cell phone. The receiver is a bit bulkier, weighing in about 300 grams and standing 2 inches taller. The receiver has an SDI and HDMI out port, while the transmitter has one SDI in, one SDI out, and an HDMI in port. Both units have reverse polarized LIMO ports for power, and we provide an LPE6 to LIMO plate for the receiver and a D-tap to LIMO cable for the transmitter. This gives you the maximum options for powering the Bolt. First of all, the Bolt can transmit a 422 1920x1080 video signal in 60 frames per second. The range is up to 500 feet with a clear line of sight with a latency of less than 1 1 thousandth of a second. The range will drop when you start throwing objects between the transmitter and receiver. Fortunately, the latency doesn't jump significantly. And supposing you do run out of range or the units disconnect for some reason, the Bolt 500 will automatically and quickly reconnect when it's back within range. The Bolt 500 operates on 11 different channels, meaning you can have more units in a given area. Teradek doesn't recommend having more than four pairs, but it is possible. Both receiver and transmitter offer HDMI and SDI cross conversion and an SDI pass-through. This means the Bolt can use a variety of cameras, monitors, and recorders. Though advertised as an all-aluminum body, the antenna is actually housed in a plastic cap. While you're not in the business of abusing your gear, if you drop it, a very integral part is the least protected. The other major consideration when using the Bolt 500 is that it is wireless. While wireless transmission does do a number of things better than cables, it does create issues too. There are certain environments where the Bolt 500 simply won't work reliably, like near power stations, radio towers, and in cement buildings. While this isn't really a fault of the Bolt, it is still something to consider when you're planning your shoot. Also, something to note is the price tag. The Bolt 500 is very expensive, a pair costing almost $4,000, which makes it something you should definitely try before you buy it. If you've made it this far and are still wondering why you might want to use the Bolt 500, let me put it simply. It's a lightweight, really reliable transfer solution which has versatile power options, it can cross-convert SDI to HDMI, and it's got a range to transmit across a football field comfortably with invisible latency. And if you do drop connection, the Bolt 500 will auto-reconnect once it detects the signal again. That's all I've got for you today. If you want to try out the new Bolt 500s, head on over to LensProtego.com. And if you have any questions about them, let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and as always, happy shooting. Thank you.